As electric vehicles are becoming more and more common, more and more of you are going to need to charge them. But have you ever wondered how that actually works? Well, I thought that I would talk about that in this video since I have this, a Renault Zoe, for me to review over on my car channel, At The Wheel. Make sure you subscribe to At The Wheel, by the way, for the full review of the Zoe and a video on how EV charging works in terms of how you actually go and do it. This video is, like I said, sort of electronics and the how it works side of things. So let's jump into the normal studio where it's much warmer and a bit quieter and we'll talk you through it. Right, that is much better. So EV charging, how does that actually work? Well, there are two main ways that you can go about charging an electric vehicle's battery, either with an AC source, alternating currents, or with DC instead, direct current. Let's start with the former, as that's kind of the most popular. It's also technically the simplest, as you can literally have a standard three pin plug plug into your wall at home. You plug in a type two connector into your car and that's it, it will be charging. Admittedly, relatively slowly, this tops out at three kilowatts, thanks to 230 volts at the maximum 13 amps that a UK plug will supply. Or even if you wanna use one of the public fast chargers, that can go up to 43 kilowatt hours of juice to pump up your car. The trouble with AC charging is that it's fundamentally not what the car's battery needs. EV batteries, actually most all chemical batteries, store power in direct current or DC. The nickel cobalt manganese pouch cells from LG Chem, the E78s that are in that Renault Zoe, store 78 amp hours of currents at around 3.7 volts nominal and about 4.2 volts fully charged. And those are connected in series to make around 400 volts of total pack voltage. And then those are connected in parallel with other packs to give more current draw capacity and more overall charge capacity and storage capacity available. But that's DC current, not AC. So to use an AC charger, whether that is a, a three pin plug like this one, a seven kilowatt home wall box charger that someone like Renault will fit for free with a purchase of any of their plug-in vehicles, or one of the public fast chargers like the pod points you get at Tesco, which are actually free to charge from while you're shopping, or even a public fast charger uh, with you know up to 43 kilowatt hours of power available. All of those, have to convert the power, or at least the car has to convert that AC power into DC that the battery can use. That conversion is done in the car's inverter. Essentially what that does is takes the sine wave that the charger is providing, flips the negative pulses to positive and smooths them out so that you get a relatively constant, well, DC voltage. That DC voltage is then sent to the DC-DC converter, which is a boost regulator that takes the 230 volts that the plug is providing here in the UK and converts it to the charging voltage for the batteries, which in the Zoe I think is a bit over 400 volts. Now by increasing the voltage, thanks to P, uh, P equals IV, you effectively have to decrease the amount of current that goes into the batteries, but remember it's the same amount of power, so that's okay. Once it has boosted the voltage to the right charging voltage, it can then finally send that power to the battery through the battery's charging and protection circuitry and then power it up. It's kind of complicated, right? The advantage to AC charging is that from the infrastructure side of things, it's really pretty simple. I mean, you can carry around this charger, this, this box in your boot, plug in literally anywhere with a standard three pin socket, and you can charge up your car. Admittedly slowly, like I said, at only three kilowatt, kilowatt hours, but even if you wanna to go to the fast chargers or seven or up to 43, well, the worst that you're gonna to have to do there is take the three phase AC that those 40 kilowatt, or 43 kilowatt hour chargers will take in and potentially convert it to single phase for the car, although potentially the car might support uh, three phase anyway. So either way, there isn't much sort of circuitry you need to do from the charger and infrastructure side of things. The downside is that AC charging isn't really overly efficient. The reason for that is that the inverter and DC-DC converter that's in the car, because of size and weight constraints, isn't the most efficient that it could be. 
That's why the Renault Zoe, despite the charging network in the UK providing up to 43 kilo hours of AC fast charging, only supports up to 22 kilo hours of fast charging internally. The inverter will not handle any more than that or will not accept any more than that. And it's also, like I said, not quite as efficient. And so you get more charging losses through that as well. The solution? Well, you put that inverter and the DC DC inverter in the charger where size and weight constraints aren't really a big deal. You can then build effectively an industrial sized inverter that can do that process much more efficiently and therefore you can produce much more power and deliver that to the battery uh, effectively a lot quicker. Now you do often need a few extra pins in your charging socket to be able to do DC fast charging. Now the Renault Zoe uses the Type 2 connector for its AC charging, but the really nice thing about the Type 2 connector is if you stick a couple of pins on the bottom, well then it becomes the uh, CCS connector which is slowly becoming the standard for all DC fast charging. There is another uh, connector that's sort of semi-widely available in the UK called Chadamo. That's something that a lot of Japanese models like the Nissan Leaf are using, although it seems like Nissan is moving away from Chadamo in favor of CCS. So that uh, CCS may become the sort of de facto standard in the not too distant future. Either way, CCS fast charging is a lot faster. The average CCS charger you'll find are in and around the UK does 50 kilowatt hours, higher than the 43 maximum that the AC options can do. And more importantly, if you can find a higher power charger and a car that supports it, the Zoe maxes out at 50 kilowatt hours of maximum charging, then you can have potentially up to 350 kilowatt hours of charging to top up your car. In fact, even Tesla have moved from their own connector to the CCS connector for the, the Tesla Model 3 and a number of their other models. And so if you buy one in the UK, even their Tesla superchargers now use the CCS connector. And speaking of the Tesla superchargers, the V2 models are between 120 and 150 kilowatt hours, other than new V3 versions, which are actually standalone rather than pairs that have a, a bit of an interesting charging etiquette. You can check out in the at the wheel video on that. Uh, those are 250 kilowatt hours, which will be able to top up your, your Tesla Model 3 or Model S or X battery incredibly quickly. One of the benefits of moving both the inverter and the DC-DC converter to the charging unit is that, like I said, you get much better efficiency. The downside is that it's more of a complicated procedure. You need careful communication between the car and the charger, not only to ensure that the charging process is safe, because charging, uh, sending DC is generally uh, more dangerous, but also so that the battery can manage what voltage and current the charger is sending to the car. And if I didn't make it clear, the more kilowatt hours you can put into your battery, the faster it will charge. The Renault Zoe has 52 kilowatt hours of usable battery space. And so on a 50 kilowatt hour DC fast charger, you should be able to fill up the Zoe from dead to full in a hair over an hour. Renault's website reckons it'll take more like an hour and a half, and in the real world it takes a bit longer than that. So you might be thinking, hey, that maths doesn't add up. Well, you would be right if battery chemistry was perfect. Unfortunately, it's not, and so one of the reasons why the charger needs to be able to vary the voltage and current is depending on the state of charge of the battery. Batteries, as they get more full, end up resisting you putting more current into them, especially at a high rate uh, as well. And so uh, as it gets more charged, you, you can put less and less power into them at any given point. A great example of this is when I was charging the Zoe at a 50 kilowatt DC fast charger. The car was around 70% full and Despite both the charger and the car being capable of charging at up to 50 kilowatt hours, it was only taking in around 25. That's because, like I said, the car is about 70% full, and so those cells were resisting putting in that full amount of current 
a fair bit, enough to, to drop the charging uh, current or the charging power by half. It's generally recommended that you don't charge your EV above 80% on a day-to-day -day basis, only charging it to the full 100% when, uh, when you really need it. Like if you're just about to go on a long journey, then you can charge it up and use it almost immediately, rather than keeping it at that full 100% voltage or 100% power uh, most of the time, and where the batteries are straining uh, more heavily and so you can ex effectively extend their lifespan by keeping it below that 80% mark. It'll also charge a lot faster from say 30 to 80 than it will from 80 to 100 and so if you're just trying to get a quick top up it's often quicker to go from 80% down to you know 5, 10% whatever, charge it back up to 80 and go to the next charger and stop more often than it is to go to the full 100% and stretch out another 20, 30, 40, 50, however many miles that percentage difference is in your range. So that's a look at EV charging and how it actually works. If you have any questions feel free to leave those in the comments down below and I'll do my best to get back to you, although my A-level in electronics can only get me so far. Otherwise feel free to check out the Renault Zoe review that will be on the end cards and check out the At The Wheel channel for my car content. Of course subscribe there so you don't miss the uh, EV charging guide over on that channel and there are plenty of links in the description as always you can check out from merch hoodies or t-shirts like this one or a load of the cool designs this is the particles uh, design i did in blender really like it there's also uh, stuff like patreon for access to our money men discord chat sponsor review videos of course you support me directly as well and affiliate links to places like overclockers uk and amazon if you're ever buying from there Otherwise, that is pretty much it. Like I said, feel free to let me know what you think in the comments down below, especially if there are any uh, uh, cars or tech that you want to see covered in the future. Feel free to let me know. Otherwise, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you on the next video.